what is going on everybody my name is brandon trades welcome back to yet another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about entries and exits this has been a highly requested video so make sure you guys do click that like and that subscribe button as well as clicking that bell icon so you do get notified every single time i upload a brand new video but let's talk about these entries and exits so a very good example of a trade that i took today was goldman sachs so this morning, if you guys didn't know, every single morning I go live on this YouTube channel and I create a pre-market watch list with you guys live. So I told everybody to watch Goldman Sachs above 402. If it was able to break above 402, we could see 402.86, 403.8, and then possibly all the way up here at 404.5. As we can see, Goldman Sachs went all the way up to 404.2. So this strategy, your entries and exits, it's really going to depend on one, what is your actual trading strategy? So are you a swing trader? Are you a position trader? Or are you a scalper right at the market open? So it's going to vary depending on what you're doing. But in this scenario, I'm gonna be scalping right at the market open. So as we can see here is where Goldman Sachs ended up breaking out above that 402 area. Now we do not want to enter the trade all the way up here because with this strategy, you wanna be using the eight EMA and the 21 EMA. So the eight EMA is ideally where you want to look to get into your positions. So if we're looking at Goldman Sachs and let's say that you did enter all the way up here, I usually position my stop loss a close below the 8 EMA. So again, I'm scalping at the market open, therefore I'm using the one minute time frame. Well, if we were to enter Goldman Sachs all the way up here, we had to give our stop loss all the way down here only to possibly make this much profit or maybe even this much profit and we'll just put it at the high of the day. So looking at these two squares right here, we can see that this is hardly a one to one risk to reward ratio. And in my opinion, that is not a good trade to get into so with this strategy you want to try to enter your trade right off of that 8 ema if you are able to pick up the contract right off of the 8 ema or even right off of that pre-market breakout either one you can see that your stop loss is now very well defined and you're now only willing to lose this much to possibly end up making this much. So now at this point, you know, we're talking maybe a six to one risk to reward ratio, if not more. So this is going to be the best possible time to get into your trades is going to be based off of that eight EMA. Again, this is on the one minute time frame. So all I had to do was close below here. On the one minute time frame, we were stopped out. What ended up happening with Goldman Sachs, it shot up, came right back to the 8 EMA yet again, and then it gave that beautiful push to the upside. Now, another example could be Facebook on the five minute time frame. Now, another beautiful example could be Tesla on the 10 minute time frame. So this happened, I believe it was last Friday, but as we can see, Tesla had a huge continuation and then it went into a bull flag. Now, a lot of people, they think that you should be entering the trade on the breakout of the bull flag. So essentially what they are thinking is that they should enter the trade all the way up here. And again, if you're following this eight EMA rule, you would have to give yourself a stop loss all the way down to here. Now, in my opinion, this would not make sense to do when it came to a risk to reward ratio. Now, would it have paid off? Of course it would have. However, again, going back to that eight EMA strategy, we want to try to pick up the contract right off of the eight EMA. And if the stock closes below it on again, whichever time frame you're watching, you're going to be stopped out of the trade. So if you were able to manage to pick up Tesla right off of this eight EMA right here, all the stock had to do was close below it. So now at this point, you're probably willing to give up like 10% of this contract. And then what ended up happening, Tesla had a huge continuation on Friday. So in my opinion, this risk to reward ratio makes a lot more sense than the original one that you would have had right here. Again, stop loss just right below that 8 EMA. As long as it continues to follow that 8 EMA to the upside, you're good and there's no reason to worry. Here's another perfect example of this strategy, but this time it's on Nvidia to the downside. So Nvidia, I wanted to watch for puts today below this 210. Unfortunately, I did not get to trade it. So a video today, I was watching for a break below this 210.05 area. Now, why would I not enter this trade right here? Well, it's super overextended from the 8 EMA. So if I were to get into this NVIDIA trade, I had to give myself a stop loss 
all the way up here which would have made absolutely zero sense for me to do just to end up possibly making down to here and as we can see nvidia dropped even more so yes it would have paid off however what if it only came to here and then it bounced the risk to reward would not have made any sense so this setup is based off of the five minute time frame we can see that nvidia had a hard rejection right here came down and then it went into a little bear flag now again a bear flag is a continuation trade to the downside therefore i want to get in just because we know what it's going to more than likely do once it cracks below again my entry will be as soon as this thing comes back to this 8 ema this is where i'm going to be looking to start a position for the trade so right here gave you an opportunity to get into the trade even right here it gave you an opportunity and right here it gave you an opportunity so it gave you 15 minutes in a row to actually start your position in the trade and all this thing had to do was close above that five minute eight ema and you would have been stopped out of the trade so now at this point here is your actual stop loss again it's probably sitting at like 10 percent of the contract and then here is your take profit and then as we can see right now nvidia is getting absolutely drilled so you could have possibly made a profit like this so this risk to reward would have made a thousand times more sense than the original risk to reward where you would have entered right here and had to give yourself a stop all the way up to here so again it makes a lot more sense to try to pick up the contract based off of the 8 ema that way your risk to reward is well defined and even if you're wrong in the trade your stop loss should be very very small and your profits should always be bigger and even looking at Boeing today, Boeing did end up breaking below this pre-market low at 211.32. But again, in my opinion, if you were to wait for the close and break below this 221.32, you had to end up entering the trade right here and you had to give yourself a stop loss all the way up to here so at this point again this would have made zero sense to actually end up doing because not only are you chasing the trade but the risk to reward makes zero sense in this scenario so what would have been a better option in this trade was being patient and waiting for the pullback to the 8 ema on the 10 minute time frame again this is where we notice the actual setup so once it pulls back to that 10 minute 8 ema all you need to do is set your stop loss right above it so again at this point you're probably willing to lose five to ten percent of the actual contract and as we can see boeing has dropped a significant amount since so from 221 all the way down to 219.5 and in reality you're probably risking like 30 40 cents as a stop loss so again, this is an absolutely beautiful risk to reward ratio, but let's talk about this same strategy on swing trades. So swing trading, it's basically going to be the same thing on where you want to enter your trades. However, there are a few more moving averages that I personally like to use when I swing trade, specifically that 21 EMA and even the 55 EMA. However, we're going to pay attention to this 8 EMA and this 21 EMA. So in my opinion, when you're swing trading, the best possible spot to pick up a contract would be based off of the 21 ema and let me actually show you a trade that i took on silver a while ago that did a little over 400 percent so again if we're looking at silver when this thing opened up in the morning you can see i still have it drawn out but it opened up in the morning all the way up here now in order for me to actually get into this trade it would have made zero sense for me to get in right as the market opened because at that point i had to get my stop loss all the way down below the 8 ema and the 21 EMA so in reality this is a huge stop loss on silver and you're probably talking 50 60 percent at this point just to probably take it back to this all-time high now would it have worked out of course it would have but if you look at it from risk to reward perspectives we're talking about like a 1 to 1.5 so in this scenario that would have made zero sense what i ended up doing was staying very very patient and my goal was to pick up silver off of the 8 ema or the 21 ema so if we're looking at silver what did it end up doing it came down and it hit that daily 21 ema almost to a t and then it bounced back up and it continued to go even higher so now at this point all the stock had to do was close below the 21 EMA and I was stopped out of the trade. So in reality, in this trade, I was probably willing to lose five to 10% on a swing trade. And then those profits, as we can see, silver just gapped up two days in a row after that, after having a very strong reaction 
off of the 21 EMA. So this thing was all the way down at this 2386 area. And then two days later, it was all the way up at 28 and it was an absolutely beautiful trade. And then let's look at one more example on a swing trade that I took on Visa a while ago based off of the weekly time frame. But if we're looking at Visa on the weekly time frame, we can see that it kept wicking off of this 8 EMA. Therefore, we were able to get into this trade just based off of the weekly 8 EMA. So when we actually ended up entering the trade, it was right here as soon as it hit that 8 EMA. Therefore, at the end of the week, all Visa had to do was close below this 8 EMA and we were stopped out of the trade. So again, we're probably talking like 10 to 15% stop loss on the options contracts. And then in reality, my take profit, if we take a Fibonacci level from pivot high, pivot low, my price targets was this 127 and this 1618 right here. So if we were able to get in right here and only risk this much and possibly to make this much, which we did, this is a much better risk to reward ratio than if we were to enter all the way at the top when it broke above all time highs. And then at that point, you gotta give yourself a stop loss all the way below that eight EMA. Therefore, the risk to reward is just not in your favor anymore. Because if we take this rectangle right here, we're only talking like a two and a half to one risk to reward ratio. However, if we take this one right here, we're probably talking at least a 10 to one risk to reward ratio on this trade. So being able to use the moving averages to help time your entries is going to be the most important. That is where it's going to allow you to get the best risk to reward ratio. And instead of chasing it after it's made a move, that's mainly where you're going to be skewing the risk to reward in the wrong direction. Always using those moving averages to time the entries is going to be able to skew the risk to reward in your favor instead. Now, as far as the exits, I also get a question a lot of the times, when do I know when to exit my position? Now, as far as exiting, there's many of things. You gotta know how to find your price targets. So if you guys have not seen my video on how to use support and resistance, I will be leaving that video down in the description. It's a whole mentorship class I did. I think it's like an hour long if you wanna watch that. And I'll also leave a video for the person's pivots. So there's a lot of ways that you can find your exit points through using support and resistance, Fibonacci and person's pivots. And then there's also a fine line where you're like, all right, I made enough money. I am satisfied with this trade. And then at that point, that is just when you exit the position. Now, the other thing that I like to do is personally, if we enter this trade based off of the eight EMA, I just move my stop loss under the eight EMA the entire way that the trade goes in my favor. So again, if we were to get into Visa right here, off of that 8 EMA. Well, as it goes in my direction, I'm moving my stop loss under that 8 EMA. And then eventually, one, we hit one of our price targets all the way up here. Or two, we're just like, all right, I like how much money I made in the trade. I'm gonna fully exit the position. Now, another thing that you can pay attention to is the overextension from the 8 EMA. Now, I don't have a set percentage of an overextension from it. Just from a visual perspective, we can see that every single time the stock gets overextended from this eight EMA right here, it tends to always pull back to it. So those are multiple reasons on why I would exit a trade. Again, one, it's overextended from the eight EMA. You should probably take your profits and you can always get back in when it comes back to the eight EMA. Two, it hits your Fibonacci levels. Three, it hits a price target based off of support and resistance. And then also using those person's pivots. Make sure to move your stop loss under that eight EMA EMA the entire time in a winning trade and then it's going to be the same exact thing if you were to trade it to the downside just move your stop loss above the eight but this video is going to be part one on entries and exits so make sure you guys do leave a comment down below and let me know that you would like to see part two if you guys are very interested in that i will be making the video sometime next week but again if you guys could make sure to click that like and that subscribe button as well as clicking that bell icon it would mean the absolute world to me other than that, everybody have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.